so uh, good evening good evening everybody and welcome to the session of uh, spoken language processing 2 myself santi prepareda along with uh, sebastian muller will organize <coughs> this session and uh, we'll be chairing for this session so there are four papers i think three uh, uh, all the authors are present except one last papers and uh, time period is already everybody knows about 15 minutes for presentation and 5 minutes for question answer and uh, so we'll call one by one i think already you have known the order of the paper so now i'll uh, invite all the presenters already there and uh, i'll hand over to my colleagues so you want to tell few things about no uh, i think we can directly start with the first paper i think okay so i'd like to invite the author of first paper uh one uh the first paper about uh, impact of uh, encoding and uh, segmenting segmentation strategies on end to end simulation uh, speech translation so i'd like to invite the authors uh thank you and hi everyone um i'm hang wen and today uh, on behalf of uh, yannick estef and logong bazasie i will give you some um, details about our work on uh, simultaneous speech translation so in this presentation i will first give you um, a short introduction about this work and after that i will go into some details of the proposed end to end simultaneous uh, encoding strategy proposed for uh, automatic speech translation and after that i will give you some details about our experiments and the results and in the end i will give some uh, takeaway messages so um different from offline translation which can uh, wait for the whole input sequence to be made uh, fully available before generating the uh text translation online translation has to start um generating translation text before the whole input sequence is available and therefore it has to make um to make um the trade off between um translation quality which is normally measured by blur score and the latency which is measured by uh, average lagging and in this work we use uh, the, the decoding strategy we use in this work is based on um weight cap policy which is firstly um proposed for text to text translation so in this uh, uh decoding policy the translation system the online translation system has to um at the decode, at, at the very first decoding step it would wait for a fixed number of k um input tokens before generating the very first output token and at each decoding step after this first step it would uh read one more um input token in order to generate um one uh output token and it continue like that until the end of the sequence and when apply this um policy for speak to text translation this work uh made a small change in that they propose to um they propose for the system to uh read uh at each decoding step after the first step um more than one um input swap frames uh they did this because they observed that normally the swap um uh, speech sequence is much longer than the uh, target text translation and in our previous work we made yet another change to this policy in which we propose for the online uh, translation system to generate uh, at maximum n output tokens at, the, at each decoding step uh, and can be greater than one uh, output tokens so i will summarize uh, the decoding strategies that we use in this work um so our um translation system would first wait at the the first decoding step k um swap frames and um at each decoding step after this first step it would read um as uh swap frames in order to generate at maximum n output tokens 
And that's the decoding uh, strategy in terms of end-to-end uh, -end, um, simultaneous uh, encoding strategies. Um, in our previous work, we showed that um, we can reuse the pre-trained offline uh, translations model uh, in online decoding mode. Uh, however, um, because our previous uh, speech encoder used uh, bidirectional MSTM layers um, in the speech encoders, and therefore our previous encoding uh, strategy uh, requires the translation system to re-encode from the beginning of the input sequence every time new uh, swap frames are consumed. And this one can imagine that this can be very time-consuming. And therefore, in this work, we propose to uh, re to use unidirectional MSTM speech encoder instead of uh, bidirectional MSTM one. Uh, but our initial experiments show that if we just um, read the chunks of frames um, uh, independently, there would be a uh, problem. The performance was very bad. We suspect that this is uh, because of uh, this is the problem from the VGG block. Uh, might be some uh, padding issues there uh, that makes the output uh, representation of the VDG block uh, is not good enough for the um, unidirectional MSTM that followed. And therefore, uh, we propose a, an encoding strategy which is called uh, overlap and compensate. And in this uh, encoding strategy, the um, um, speech encoder would read some uh, extra frames from the past in order to compensate for some discarded position of the um, output representation of the VGG blocks. And I will go into the experiments. So as mentioned earlier, uh, in this work, we propose to use unidirectional MSTM uh, speech encoder instead of bidirectional MSTM1. So we have to uh, pre-train another offline uh, English to German uh, model using um, unidirectional MSTM switch encoder. So we, we use actually the same configuration as what we proposed in our previous work. The only difference is that we, instead of uh, stacking uh, bidirectional MSTM, MSTM layers, we stack uh, unidirectional MSTM layers uh, in the uh, speech encoder. And in this work, we want to uh, compare this um, overlap and compensate encoding strategy with the re-encode encoding strategy we proposed in our previous work. And also we want to see the uh, impacts of uh, different segmentation methods uh, on the uh, performance of the online translation system. I will go into more detail of these, uh, of these um, segmentation methods later in, our, in my um, presentation. So firstly, uh, we put the overlap and compensate uh, encoding strategy in comparison with the re-encode encoding strategy. Um, looking at the result, we can firstly see that um, in general, Jimmy directional MSTM speech encoder outperforms uh, bi-directional MSTM one. And um, in terms of um, blue and average lacking trade-off, um, and when used with overlap and compensate uh, encoding strategy is even better, uh, especially in low latency regimes, which is uh, uh, smaller than two seconds. And we also noticed that uh, the, 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 the encoding speed is actually faster with, with uh, unidirectional MSTM switch encoder. And uh, when powered with uh, our proposed uh, unidirectional MSTM overlap and compensate, uh, it is the fastest. And in this work, we also try to investigate the impact of different segmentation methods on the performance of our system. So we investigated three uh, different segmentation methods. The first one is we call fixed interval boundary segmentation methods. This is uh, identical to the weight K policy that we um, used in our previous work. The second one we use is um, the Oracle word boundary segmentation methods. In this method, we first um, segment the input audio in phrase level into word, word levels using uh, Montreux um, Foster liner. And then we, our um, decoding strategy will read at the first decoding step several words. Uh, as long as the sum of the corresponding acoustic frames of these words is smaller than k um, 
uh, a weight parameters we use. And at each decoding step after this, the um, system will read um, consistently read uh, one more word in order to generate at maximum and uh, output tokens. And the last uh, segmentation method that we use in this work is uh, called um, randomly set boundary segmentation methods. In this work, we uh, cut the audio input into random size uh, audio chunks. But uh, in order to avoid um, unreasonably um, fluct uh, fluctuation in terms of uh, the audio uh, side chunk, we set a constraints and we uh, generate the number of frames uh, randomly in this uh, uh, constraints. So our decoding strategy will read at each decoding step one um, chunks of frames in order to generate at maximum n uh, output tokens. And this is the results. So um, the the results show that um, our proposed um, overlap and compensate encoding strategy uh, works the best with the fixed interval boundary segmentation method, uh, surprisingly. And um, uh, the randomly set boundary segmentation method uh, gives us uh, the worst performance. And finally, in this work, we use uh, finally in this work we use the um, uh, lacking difficulty proposed by the the, the work in the uh, bottom of the slide uh, in order to as our measurement for the com complication of uh, the input uh, sequence. Uh, based on this uh, metric, we um, extract um, 100 easiest and 100 hardest uh, input sentence from our test sets, and we re-evaluate our system on the subsets, and the results show that our proposed method works the best with 100 easiest sentence and vice versa. So to conclude, in this work, we sh compare the uh, genuine-directional MSTM speech encoder and by MSTM speech encoder uh, when using the same re-encode encoding strategy and we find that unidirectional MSTM speech encoder actually um, outperforms uh, bidirectional MSTM uh, encoder. And also in this work, we propose a new um, encoding strategy for unidirectional MSTM speech encoder, uh, which is called overlap and compensate and with this uh, encoding strategy we can improve further improve the uh, inference speed and also the performance of the our um, translation system uh, in terms of uh, blur and average lighting trade-off and we also analyzing the impacts of uh, speech flow segmentation uh, compared comparing three different uh, segmentation methods and uh, we see that our uh, proposed method works the best with the fixed interval boundary segmentation method. Thank you. Thank you for the nice presentation. So, is there any question from audience? Yeah. Please. Hello. In all of the plots where you were showing blue as a function of the leg, there was some dent for at least one of the curves. Could you comment on it? Yes. I don't know if I can go back on my slide. Uh, you mean some, some drops? Yeah. So uh, we use different uh, combination of uh, the um, decoding uh, parameters, and I said before. Um, um, so we use different combination of K, S, and N. Um, and um, in my ex uh, ex experience, um, the the drops will. Um, corresponding to uh, the combination where uh, n is uh, uh, too big, for example, uh, free tokens. Uh, I think it's when the uh, translation system, system uh, over-generates uh, translation uh, takes. Thank you. Any questions? Would you 
the remote audience, you can either type in questions or you can also raise your hand and then we can give you the, the microphone. Uh, so people in the virtual room can, can both either use the question function or the microphone. Any other questions here in the room? I think we have another couple of minutes. I have a question. So, yes. whenever, uh, whenever for uh, spoken language translation, so I think this work is for uh, English to German. Right? Yes. English to German. So, my question is that uh, is there the uh, how the language is dependent on this spoken language translation because uh, every language I I has its own property, uh, considering the fluency and many linguistical aspects are there. Yes. So, do you think that uh, how impact the language uh, relating to this uh, spoken language yes. and the fluency particularly about the fluency because some language if you look into we talk <coughs> we talk in a specific uh, order or the fluency and some uh, linguistical property also varies quite a lot so whenever we are considering some spoken language translation how how much it impact yes um uh, I think the the distance between the language pair in questions uh, matter matter a lot for example, in this work, we only um, experiment experiments with uh, English speech to German text, which is uh, not very close um, because the uh, the word ordering uh, matters a lot. So we don't have as good results as what we had with um, English to Portuguese in our previous work. So I would say that the, the distance between the language uh, would matter a lot. Yeah, and uh, do you think that, okay, for example, uh, if you are considering, for example, English to German or some European language, and if you move to your uh, something to Arabic or you are uh, something to different, different language category, uh, do you think that your method will work or again you need to be do something separately, your algorithm? Uh, unfortunately, I, I, I haven't moved that far from the European languages, so I can give you um, the, um, the, the um, how to say, absolute answer, but uh, I think, okay. I think, no I think it's, it would be very di different and uh, it would be very interesting as well. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. No problem. So is there any other questions? We have a couple of minutes. Thank you for your presentation. Thank you. You said that uh, <coughs> surprisingly the uh, fixed uh, pla uh, fi placed uh, boundaries uh, 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 obtain the best results. Do you have uh, a guess on uh, why and is when you placed the boundaries uh, randomly, did you uh, choose uh, an average uh, length for the segments uh, that matched uh, as a fixed one? Or? Yeah, so I, I say that is surprising because uh, I would expect that when we know in advance the um, word boundary information, uh, like the Oracle segmentation method that I uh, presented, we would have uh, better results, but the results show um, <laughs> the result is not what I expected. Uh, unfortunately, I, I for now, I, um, I haven't uh, successfully done any uh, experiment to to explain this uh, yeah unexpected results okay thank you any more questions if not i think we can thank our speaker again thank you